Hey there, it's Steve here, and in this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about using the ConvertKit WordPress plugin on your WordPress website. Now, before we get started, I should say that this is part of my full ConvertKit course, which is available free on YouTube, and you can see in the link below this video in the description. So please do check that out after this course. And remember, if you learn something new or you enjoy this video, give us a like so more people will see it because Google will share it with other people because it's a good video and it helped you in some way. So without further ado, let's get started with this WordPress ConvertKit plugin tutorial. Okay, so I'll open my website in a new tab and it's currently got no ConvertKit on there. Let's do it for this demo. And we want to add the ConvertKit plugin. So if we come down to plugins, add new. And up in the top right, we simply search for ConvertKit. Hit enter. Remember it's one word. And you'll see this, at least this is the logo for now. And that's exactly what we want. ConvertKit by ConvertKit. Let's press install now. Now that's going to ask us to do a few other things back on the ConvertKit website, which we'll do in the next steps. So I'll activate it and it's gone through to my list of plugins. So, so far so good. And you can see down here it's got activate. So version 1.9.2 and I could see the settings from there if I need to. So I have clicked settings and these are the two key things we need to get uh, convert kit up and running we need an api key and an api secret don't worry about exactly what they are but they are standard for connecting plugins on your wordpress website with paid services so if i click on get your convert kit api key almost forgot what i clicked then but i knew i needed to then it will take me to this page on the convert kit website and i'm still logged in and i will find it there and so you can see I've got the API key down here. And if I single click and copy that there, I'll just come back to my WordPress website and paste it. And equally the API secret down here. Now I'm going to have to pixelate this, but I press show and it will pop up. And it pops up on my screen. So again, it's a single click copy and paste and remember these are unique for your ConvertKit account okay so that when I confirm this that will now have bridged the connection between WordPress and ConvertKit and then once we do save this we can come back later and we can choose our default form for posts and pages so it will actually put a form that we choose from our list over on ConvertKit on those pages. Perhaps you want one of those pop-up forms, you know, to get as many subscribers and you can set that as your default across the entire site with one click. So it's a really nice, simple process. For now, I'm just going to save my changes and settings saved. Okay, so everything is connected as it should be. So now we've connected WordPress to ConvertKit. It really is that simple. So what I can do next is I can click, go here to create a form that I can deploy via my website. And remember again, it's taking me to the relevant page on ConvertKit. So it's asking, do I want a form or a landing page? And as it says, you know, this would be embedded into your page, whereas a landing page is a standalone. So it's something unique of its own kind. It's more like a sales page. In this case, we're just going to do form. And again, you know, we've got inline appears just in the in the body of the text. Modal will be our pop out slide in from the bottom and a sticky bar from the top. So let's say we want to create a default form that pops up on every visitor or every page that people visit on our website let's go for a modal form and we've got a, a range of templates to choose from so let's choose charlotte because it's already got a picture looks quite visually appealing and instantly now we can start editing our form Now, the first thing I would recommend doing 
our form creation stage is actually to change the name. So if I click the pencil icon, select and then delete one, anything that you know will be descriptive for you and hit enter. See the pencil icons back, brilliant. Now incidentally, part of the reason why I like this with my site being about surfing, it's already got uh, something from the sea, but perhaps I want a bit, something a bit more specific. And if I did click on the background option there, I can either upload one of my own, I can pull from Instagram, or I can use Unsplash. In this case, I'm gonna use Unsplash, great royalty-free website where people very generously share things like stock photography, lifestyle, and so on, just in exchange for giving them credit. So it's a fantastic resource. So let's say I put my keyword surfing. Now, I really want one that is vertical okay because the display of that image was quite vertical so perhaps if i choose this there you go it crops quite nicely into that picture one thing i've found is if you did a let's say a standard photo that was more horizontal it doesn't crop you know so it, it obscures what would be in this part of the picture with the white so i'd look for vertical photos there and i'd recommend just hitting that save button at regular intervals just to be sure because the auto save isn't quite what I think it should be and then we can add some text okay get our how-to guide maybe I'll just keep it simple and I'll just do a latest updates for now now this is where it comes in your own email marketing strategy how are you going to entice people to sign up for your whatever it is maybe it's a lead magnet you're giving them something free I've done free ebooks in the past that are pretty short but still valuable. They work really well. Depends at which point, you know, you could say sign up and I will send you my free ebook, etc. In this case, I'll just keep it very simple, latest updates. And we can see it's just got first name and email address. Again, I really like that simplicity. I could drag and drop to reorder them, but just having a name then gives you the option to customize your email messages as we'll see later on and the email address then obviously is the crucial part of information you need you can add more here if you need to but I'm happy with that for now so again if I click here on the text you see I've got that single click and I can change it now again we want something that's sort of appealing catchy and short sign me up you know something informal to convey the right message for your readers and you can also leave these I don't know if you can change that anyway but this text below is good and it shows it's powered by ConvertKit if you did want you could change the background color but you know I'm pretty happy with how it looks for now so I'm gonna save that again from there we can also have a look at the styles option now, this is a Charlotte modal form you could change that template or look in the library and the other points we've already seen if I go down to the cog icon which has the settings I can look at custom domain where I could host it on a specific domain within my website or I could use a, a ConvertKit one to have it as a standalone so I could send people to this as its own web page if I want and you can customize your success message so as soon as they hit sign me up what do they see okay and you probably do want something along these lines although you could customize it but you definitely want to give them a nudge to check that because so many people don't actually confirm and you don't get to send them any more emails communicate them with with them in future so again in the purposes of keeping this simple i'm just going to put my website in here go nice and easy again you could redirect to an external page instead of showing this and you could just check that there that would take them to a specific page as soon as they've signed up again instead of just the message however you'd like to do it so if I scroll down and the display options this is quite interesting so it could be so timing you can have it you know appear after the visitor has been on your page for five seconds you can have it as a scroll percentage so how much of that page have they scrolled down according to the bar here or you could have exit intent and this is generally when they start 
you know the mouse cursor starts moving up and down or they start swiping back and forth something like that and there's some kind of smart technology perhaps ai that then triggers that so you know if they are going to leave you could have it save them from leaving without asking them but you know those are probably not the kind of people who are going to be signing up for your emails anyway so maybe we'll say let's up that to about 10 seconds five seconds feels a little bit short although it is the default so there's clearly some evidence behind why they've done that and again you can see you can you know get into a bit more of the code we're not going to cover that now because you know we'll, we'll just keep things nice and simple and which devices should see this all devices or do you want it mobile specific or desktop one of the reasons why i like this shape is it looks like it's not going to be too wide to be all squashed on a mobile as well because a mobile viewport or the way users on a mobile would see it would be quite narrow so this should work for that some of the wider ones yeah it will adjust proportionally but this one looks like it'll be good as is for all devices and how often should a visitor see this so if they've already seen it and hit the cross didn't want it will you repeat it again within 15 days again that looks good to me so let's leave that as the default and what we'll do we'll press save now we can preview it simply just takes away the sidebar and that will pop up on our page as it is a modal form and press exit preview now I could get the embed code and you've got your options here but what I'd recommend at this point again I'll save just once more to be sure if I come back to ConvertKit and I refresh my forms in the ConvertKit settings page then we have the option to deploy that as our default form in that list so because it's modal it will be on every page just from that simple click i simply have to save those changes and we've now got convert kit opt-in form on every page of our website pretty cool okay so now let's go over to the website and see how a user would see it on the web page and how the form appears to them so now i've just come back over into my standard google chrome browser and i'll try and preview it as a standard user so if I go to the website we've got a time delay of 10 seconds perhaps I'll just continue as normal and there it is it pops up as expected so you can see it's just what we thought and it takes over the screen so in this case let's say I'll just put in my first name and I'll put in a different email address for the purposes of this example and I simply have to press hit the sign me up button and you can see all the other points they're all there so if I press sign me up then we get the standard success message as we'd expected and well that's pretty much it it's that simple so now remember to check out the full convert kit course and the link is in the description below as well as on the screen now Make sure you check that out. It'll give you everything you need about ConvertKit as it will help you with your email marketing immensely. So remember, give us a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful as well. And I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.